Hey everyone, my name is Arhan from Social Science Simplified. Today, Thomas and I are going to be talking about Unit 13 in the Myers textbook for AP Psychology. Let's get into it. As we learned in Unit 12, there are a lot of different psychological disorders that people can have. In the past, people treated these disorders by drilling holes into their heads, tying them up, or even performing exorcisms. Today, we do things a little bit differently. We give patients welcoming environments to recover in, talk to them about their childhood experiences, current feelings, and maladaptive thoughts and behaviors. We've learned to prescribe certain drugs to help patients grow and recover from their disorders. So let's talk about the different types of therapies that we use today and how we treat abnormal behavior. This chapter is very term dense, so as long as you have a solid understanding of these terms, you'll be just fine for the exam. Modern Western therapies can be classified into two main categories. Psychotherapy treatment involving psychological techniques consists of interactions between a trained therapist and someone seeking to overcome psychological difficulties or achieve personal growth. Biomedical therapy offers medication and other biological treatments that act directly on the person's physiology. But it's also important to understand some key terms and vocabulary. Eclectic approaches to therapy use techniques from various forms of therapy, like practicing psychotherapy, but also using biomedical therapy at the same time by prescribing medication. You'll also have to understand psychoanalytic theory, which has been covered in previous chapters, such as Unit 10, which was personality, which was the first major psychological therapy that included things like free association and the analysis of the unconscious. It was Freud's first major theory, but it isn't really considered credible today, and has since branched off into psychodynamic theory. Next, we have humanistic therapies, which are also called insight therapies, which aim to boost people's self-fulfillment by helping them grow in self-awareness and self-acceptance. You've probably heard this before because it's Carl Rogers back again. He developed a therapy called client-centered therapy, which acts on the principle of the client leading the discussion and for the therapist to actively listen with an accepting, genuine and empathetic environment, or AGE is the acronym that can help you remember this. And third, we have behavioral therapy, which acts on the idea that our problems result from our problematic behavior. And if we unlearn this behavior and replace it with positive and more advantageous ones, then we can overcome our challenges. Behavioral therapists champion the idea that just because you know or you're aware that you're scared of horse girls doesn't make them any less scary. But by using tools such as counter-conditioning, exposure therapies, systematic desensitization, aversive conditioning, or even virtual reality exposure therapy, we can learn more adaptive behavior, like steering clear of them in the hallway or just ignoring those horse girls in general, so that you end up not being afraid of them so much anymore. Next, we have cognitive therapy, which teaches people new, more adaptive ways of thinking, which is based on the assumption that our thoughts stand in between events and our reactions to them. Rational emo emotive behavior therapy teaches people to think like these middle school posters about having a growth mindset. Cognitive therapists use a variety of techniques to change people's mindsets, so make sure you're familiar with them. And while behavior therapy focuses on what we do and cognitive therapy focuses on what we think, Cognitive behavioral therapy integrates both of these ideas to both change people's self-defeating thinking and their dysfunctional behavior. Finally, the group and family therapies are exactly what they sound like. Group interaction serves as a way to view people in the context of their family situation and can help multiple people see the impact that they have on one another. First is psychodynamic therapy, which aims to strengthen a client's self-awareness and understanding of the influence that their past has on their present behavior. Client-centered places significant focus on the client. Therapist's objective is to enable growth, acceptance, genuineness, and empathy, basically emulating Carl Rogers' theories. Third, we have behavior focuses on teaching the client how to adapt from their dysfunctional behavior to a more healthy and successful lifestyle. Next is cognitive, 
which promotes healthier thinking and self-talk and teaches people their self-worth. And then combining those two, we have cognitive behavioral. This therapy also promotes the healthier thinking, but it also emphasizes adaptive behavior, hence the behavioral part of the name, usually employed to help people stop from self-harming. And finally, group and family therapy aims to heal relationships through improving communication and understanding social environments. However, a more important question in all of this is how do therapies work, and do they work? The answer is a little more complicated than a yes or no, and while there are critics, numerous studies have shown that patient satisfaction is nearly 90%, and those not undergoing therapy often improve, but those undergoing therapy are more likely to improve, and do so more quickly and with less risk of relapse. And no therapy is more effective than another, because they all treat different things. But let's also talk about biomedical therapies. They can change the brain's chemistry with prescription drugs, affect its circuitry, and electrical simulation with magnetic pulses or psychosurgery, or influence its responses with lifestyle changes. By far, the most widely used biomedical treatments today are drug therapies. For example, prescription antipsychotic drugs help treat schizophrenia and other thought disorders by reducing their hallucinations and paranoia. Anti-anxiety drugs are used to control anxiety and agitation, and antidepressant drugs treat depression, anxiety disorders, OCD, and PTSD. By allowing more serotonin, a neurotransmitter that regulates our mood, to be received by our neurons. However, psychiatrists can also shock their patients with electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, which stimulates the brain of a severely depressed patient that hasn't been responding to drug therapy. The shock administers a 30 second to a minute long seizure in the patient, but is not felt or remembered upon upon wakening from the anesthetic. Surprisingly, it can actually be really effective and isn't really barbaric or cruel as it seems. There are three other very similar therapies called transcranial electrical stimulation, magnetic stimulation, and deep brain stimulation, which all work in pretty identical ways. So let's do a recap on the biomedical therapies we've covered so far. So the first and most commonly used biomedical therapy is drug therapy, which is where psychiatrists prescribe drugs such as antipsychotic or antidepressant drugs that treat brain activity. While these are widely used, they can result in very difficult side effects for the patients. We also talked about electroconvulsive therapy, which is where the brain of severely depressed patients is safely shocked in order to stimulate brain activity. And finally, we covered types of therapy very similar in fashion listed here. And that's all. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Leave a like and subscribe. That's it for this video. Make sure to check out our other videos in the psychology series, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey!